Yes. Okay. So as I was saying, liquid engines. Um, same as everything else, you got fuel and an oxidizer, but in this case, they are either uh, gases or uh, liquids that you just pipe in at a set rate. They have a lot of efficiency, but they have a little more kind of uh, inert mass and surrounding material than solid engines do, but they can burn for a lot longer at lower thrust, which is generally what you want for getting stuff to orbit, because if you try to burn a lot really fast, you go very quick for a little bit, but then get killed by drag. Um, they're pretty complicated. Basically, colleges and above work on them, and I can think of maybe 10 to 15 colleges that have successfully hot-fired liquid rocket engines that are beyond tiny Bunsen burner scale. But thankfully, we're one of them, and we're working on a big one for flights for the dollar per quit competition, which is Project Redshift. Um, hybrid engines, just going to touch on this real quick. They're kind of the bastard child of both solid and liquid engines in that you have a solid fuel grain and then you put a uh, liquid or gaseous oxidizer through it. This kind of lets you control and adjust some parts of it, right, of the combustion and lets you do fun things like pulse fire. So you get some of the benefits of both solids and liquids. In theory, it's really, really, really good because of that, but in practice, it's hard to control and kind of shitty. It's mostly used by hobbyists looking for interesting projects that they don't really care about efficiency for, and some NASA research groups that are trying to actually make it work. Um, not really going to spend time on this right now. For reference, this presentation is the, actually the first presentation we're going to use to for the actual teaching part of this uh, course later. But this is what I had on hand, so this is what we're going through now. As far as how liquid engines actually work for our purposes, we don't use any pumps, just because they would be very large unless you use turbo pumps, which are complicated and out of scope. So you have a pressurizing gas at the top. In this diagram, it's helium. We're cheap, so we tend to use nitrogen. Then you would have liquid oxygen. We do use liquid oxygen for most of our things. Um, that would provide the oxidizer. And in this diagram, you have liquid hydrogen. That's the fuel. We don't use liquid hydrogen because we don't have a death wish. Uh, basically, NASA is the only one that does on the space shuttle engines. We tend to use liquid methane or kerosene or sometimes some alcohols. They all go into the combustion chamber here, burn, and then the hot gas is accelerated through the nozzle. There's a bunch of different parameters to them, but the idea for a properly designed rocket engine is to have the gas flow leaving the engine be supersonic. So you maximize that kind of the momentum and thrust equivalence, gets you the most thrust on the rocket itself. Um, we had a couple of engines in the past. The first engine that we built was the isopropyl alcohol gas oxygen engine. It was built for 50 pounds of thrust, really a proof of concept. It's essentially a giant hunk of stainless steel with a combustion chamber and a nozzle stuck in the middle of it. It's because it doesn't have any sort of cooling, so it just absorbs the heat and burns for a very short period. The next engine we built was the uh, methylox engine, so it's liquid methane and liquid oxygen. 350 pound force. It was designed to uh, fly on a rocket for a competition out in Nevada. We actually successfully fired the engine. Northeastern's uh, part of this competition was to build the engine and feed system. The, there were several other colleges that we were working with that were supposed to build the rocket for it, that all the members on them kind of graduated. So we have an engine and not a rocket for it. The uh, current development project we have is the Regen engine, which is regeneratively cooled, runs on kerosene and liquid oxygen. Regenerative cooling is fun because what we're actually doing is we're piping kerosene into the wall and cooling the wall actively and then pulling it out and then putting it back into the combustion chamber as the fuel. So that means that we can keep the engine cool indefinitely as long as we have fuel for it. And we also don't have energy, energy losses because all the energy is from the cooling just goes right back into the combustion chamber. 
And that's kind of where we what we've done so far as a club for liquid engines, high level overview. For the rest of the course, what we'll be going doing is everyone, either individually or in small groups, depending on what everyone wants to do, will be designing their own small liquid engine. It'll be on the scale of the isopropyl gaseous oxygen engine. Um, but what we'll be going through is kind of selecting what fuel and oxidizer we want to use, what chamber pressure you want to use, using a NASA calculator that basically tells you what the result of combustion will be. The reason we use NASA calculator for that is it really can't be done by hand and it's either use NASA's calculator or write our own. So no reason to do that. We will go over the theory behind how it works. Similarly, the nozzle design and the nozzle curve that you kind of see here, we'll work through where that comes from. We'll be putting the uh, entire engine into SolidWorks. It'll be relatively simple. So if you don't know SolidWorks or anything like that, don't worry about it at all. This will be by far the least uh, cat heavy of any of the intro tracks. We'll be doing a fluid numerical simulation on it uh, using either ANSYS or SOLIDWORKS. And then we'll be talking about how to design a propellant injector. While we're going through all of this, we'll also be doing discussions on why the fluids in the rocket engine do what they do, how the combustion works, and just all of the theory behind why rocket engines kind of work at all. Depending on how things go and whether or not we're still on campus, um, we'll be then get into turning the designs that each of you make into manufacturable designs. So whether the manufacturing that we need to do is machining it out of bulk material, 3D printing, or something else, but we'll talk about how to design for that. And then again, depending on whether or not we're still here, uh, we will be selecting at least one of the engines that you all design. We'll go through any refinements that we want to do with it as a group and hopefully make one of them and hot fire it in hopefully early spring. Um, can I interrupt and ask a question or do you want them at the end? Um, yeah, go for it. Um, so for the theory part, like it makes sense that we're learning theory of like the liquid rocket if we're building one, but um, will we learn theory of any other types of engines? Um, so most of it is pretty transferable. Like very, pretty much the only thing that we're not going to talk about is how compressors and turbines work because that's far outside scope. But beyond that, like combustion and then going through a nozzle is how pretty much any form of uh, aircraft propulsion that doesn't use a propeller works. So we will we'll at least touch on how it applies to other things. Okay, cool. Thank you. As far as the structure of this will be, we'll have uh, Tuesdays from 8 to 9 for kind of lead theory and how to design presentations. And then Thursdays will be kind of a working session for groups as well as having the mentors available for Q&A and similar things. So yeah, that's pretty much my spiel right now. More questions, comments, concerns? start next week? Yep, we'll start next week. Maybe next Tuesday or next Thursday. Depends is how there much. a um, specific time tomorrow when the sign up is? 11.30 a.m. 11.30, gotcha. Yep. Awesome, thank you. Um, experience is not at all important. We're going to be going from the ground up. As long as you passed physics and chem in high school, you're fine. Like we'll be touching on thermodynamics and some fluids, but not to the level that we do in class. That said, if you go into those classes kind of knowing this, you're going to have a fun, completely fine time in those classes, which are usually scary for people. Uh, 
Um, just one question. Besides, unless it's just taught through mentors, is this taught through any specific online program? Uh, probably Zoom. We have, we're building presentations for it, and then we kind of ran a trial of this over the summer for people within Aerospace NU who were not uh, familiar with liquids, just so we could kind of get an idea on how to build this curriculum. And it was fairly successful to have these presentations and then have everyone kind of split up, work on their components for their own engines, and then come back and ask questions and ask us where they were stuck. There's a lot of places they were stuck. It's uh, a lot of places where we made mistakes on how we explain things. So hopefully now that we went through that once, we'll have cleaned that up a lot. To be clear, this is not just another uh, video lecture because I know everyone has enough of those with normal classes right now. Like the mass majority of this is going to be focused on how to design the actual engine. Any more questions on anything? I know that this meeting is being recorded. Will other meetings be recorded? Yes, it's our, the uh, like teaching and design explanation meetings will be recorded. The uh, working sessions and the question and answer sessions will be recorded for the most part. Okay. Um, I've got a question. Do any, like, have you ever seen any professional opportunities come out of the work that students do in this class? Uh, yes. Well, okay. So this is the entire intro program has been revamped this year. In the past, it was largely only a, what's basically now intro airframe. But out of this kind of works, as such as building these liquid rocket engines, like the person who, um, was the leading per member for making this methalox engine. It now works at SpaceX on the Raptor engines that were on the uh, spaceship one, whatever, it is, whatever they named it now. The one is supposed to try to do a bunny hop in a couple of days. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, so we have a lot with that. We know a couple, we have a lot of other people that get co-ops at interesting places based off the work they do. So a lot of NASA JPL, a lot of SpaceX, Tesla, Pratt & Whitney, GE, et cetera. All the fun aerospace ones. Companies like Project Experience because they sh it shows that you can actually do something and not just uh, regurgitate classes. What other questions do does anyone have specific to this or not? Feel free. How are you doing? Ah, fun, fun, fun. I'm supposed to be in the uh, Redshift crop meeting right now, too, because uh, we were smart and scheduled with these at the same time. So Beautiful. I'm answering uh, messages for that. What about you? I'm doing good. I mean, always slightly dying, but just a little bit. Yeah, engineering. Is Redshift like the more advanced section of the Aerospace Club? Right now, yes. Redshift merged a couple of our older projects. Carmen, which was trying to get us to space technically, which is 100 kilometers from the surface, and um, LRE, which was liquid rocket engine, which, well, that's what it sounds like. Um, but it's built to advanced engines. 
Do a lot of people end up going from intro to Redshift? Yep, very gotcha. much so. There's also nothing stopping you from doing both right off the bat. It's just like intro is made for teaching and bringing people up to speed. Redshift, obviously, we're not just going to like chuck you into it, but also it takes a little more jumping forward and catching up. But that being said, there's nothing stopping you from joining multiple projects. Like, feel free to. Would it be reasonable to take like one of the intro tracks this semester and then another one next semester? It's unclear what we're going to do next semester. Most of the tracks are likely to have some form of continuation. But generally, if you take one of these, you'll probably be in a... Uh, kind of up-to-date enough place that you can transfer to, let's say, the Redshift version of the same thing. Okay, thank you. Will there be a place or like a document where all the information is kind of consolidated in terms of like the tracks that we want to take, like going from intro to say the Redshift program or something like that? Um, as in like what you're going to learn in each track or Sorry, yeah, because um, I was kind of in and out in terms of like um, the information that was given about, I guess, the general layout. Um, so I think I'm, I, I think I'm kind of confused in some areas, but because um, like my intent is to, to join the intro program. Um, so I think I'm just a little confused as to like really just from beginning to end how that looks. Yeah, okay. So the intro program, it varies track from track, but the purpose of it is to one, bring everyone kind of up to speed in that area as well as give them general engineering experience and also have them complete a kind of standalone project. So for example, uh, Airframe is building rockets and then transitioning to working on larger rockets in the spring, assuming that we are in person. Um, that uh, Mechatronics is working on small payloads that are supposed to go on those larger rockets for the spring. We're working on uh, making those individual engine designs, which will at least uh, plastic 3D print and send out to everyone if you're not on campus. Um, and then avionics is going to make custom PCBs. And then that, so basically what the setup is then, you'll, for airframe, you'll have the knowledge on how our airframes work to transfer to dollar per foot airframe or something else similar, depending on what projects we're running down the line. Um, avionics, we have a large avionics team that does very advanced custom PCBs and flight computers. Mechatronics, we same thing, you'll be transitioning to like designing or parachute deploy mechanisms and stuff like that. And for propulsion, transitioning to working on the Regen engine, probably version two after the first one maybe blows up. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. Okay, cool. Um, so, so basically then upon signing up tomorrow or the, the sign up period, you choose what track that you want to go on, like wh which subgroup that you hope to. Yeah. So you'll rank them one to four. I mean, if you absolutely don't want to do one, you don't need to put them all, all four on, but, sure. and then it'll be, it'll be first come first serve track by track. So as many people as we can get in whose first choice it was then distribute from there basically. Oh. All right, cool. Thanks. Are there supposed to be multiple breakouts? Yeah, it's supposed to be 20 minutes per. Are there like some, is she gonna like take us back? Yeah, I mean, we should get a message. Mm, okay. If anyone uh, wants to go and wait in the main room, feel free to as well. But also feel free to wait here until we're officially done. I don't know when that'll be though. Um, I am going to stop recording this session. <laughs>